Welcome to a Stepping Stones interview. I'm Caroline Stevens, and today I'm on location with Gordon Bowden. We're discussing fraud and deception in Wales. Okay, welcome. My name's Caroline Stevens. Today I'm in Derby and I'm interviewing Gordon Bowden. Now, Gordon and I have never actually met before, but we've, um, I've interviewed Gordon on a few occasions and I am fascinated by his meticulous attitude um, to his work, uh, really based on Finchley Road and the shell companies that emanate from there. And some very famous names are actually connected with the Finchley Road shell companies. So, Gordon, thank you so much it's for having pleasure, me around Caroline. today. Um, and we've had a chat before we came on air and you know the recent case about a, um, a Peter Hay yes I know him well and strangely you've just produced some documentation regarding Peter Hay so Correct. why don't we start our chat based on that politician yeah right honorable Peter sorry sorry Lord Peter Hay let's not uh, beat about the bush here he's, uh, he's gone up in the world the ex-Rhodesian um, connected to the mining companies in South Africa, to which I'm quite well acquainted. Yeah, Peter Hain. Uh, I'd like to start, Peter Hain had a very close connection uh, with a certain lady who took me to court, and her name was Tara Andrea Davison. That name and about 800 other alias names. <laughs> so she was a quite a prolific user of various aliases. Um, yeah, Peter Hain was visited by Tara Andrea Davison um, in connection with information that she wanted uh, uh, held safe uh, and it was put in Peter Hain's constituency safe. So he was a Labour MP, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Right, and um, that was it in Wales? Yeah, Wales. Um, so. Uh, Tara Andrea Davison and Pete Sawyer went to visit Peter Hayne at his constituency office and they had information regarding a missing nuclear warhead. You now, just lose those every day, don't you? Of course you do. Yeah, fall off the back of a truck. And if you've got the right of money and you live in Peckham, you can get a few, you know. How big are they? Um, they'd fit in a... Uh, well, they, they would have been Merv type because they came off a British nuclear submarine and they were on the way back down to the nuclear weapons establishment for servicing. And apparently one truck containing one of these warheads went missing out of the convoy. Now that information came from a gentleman called David William Mills, who was the living partner, separated from his wife in Stoke-on-Trent, and um, he was resident with Miss Davison at Manchester House 32 Bangor Street. Now he worked at the nuclear weapons establishment and I'm sure that's where this information came from. And they gave Peter Hain a letter which they asked he put in his constituency safe. So there was a nuclear establishment actually in Peter Hain's constituency? No, no. Peter Hain was given this information, this data, by Andrea Davison and Pete Sawyer. Yeah. <clears throat> the information could only have come from one person, and that's David William Mills. He was a systems engineer at Magnox North Trous Vineyard Power Station, a decommissioned power station. Decommissioned? In, in when, North when, Wales. When was it decommissioned? 1989 to 1991. Right, so quite some time ago. It's a long time ago, and that's the trouble with nuclear fissile material. It takes a long time to make it stable and uh, uh, lose its radioactive uh, half-life. Uh, in the case of st uh, the rods, the fuel rods, 250,000 years. So quite dangerous stuff, especially if you live in Anglesey or North Wales and something goes wrong. However, this has to do with a nuclear warhead and the information could only have come from David William Mills who was resident with Andrea Davison at that time and took this information to Peter Hain. And my point is I downloaded that letter from the website of Andrea Davison. So it's factual. 
as far as I'm concerned. And I've approached Pitain and said, is this true? Not a word back. So this is, so is this, this, is, this, letter, this letter? No, 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 it's not, it's not that letter. This, this is concerning Anglesey Mining and how I've managed to uh, join it together in a, in a 1 to uh, A to Z of how Peter Hain has been covering up more than uh, Sir Philip Green's nefarious activities. Right. Yeah, so... He who points the finger sometimes yes. has three fingers pointing back at them. Exactly. Um, so, what we have is a man who now uh, is dressed in, I call him the vermin in ermine, um, who is now strutting the corridors of power, who has to answer, is this information correct? And the question that he needs to answer is... Um, what was your relationship with Miss Tara Andrea Davison and Pete Sawyer and Mr David William Mills? And is it true, the information that's been provided to you about a missing nuclear warhead? We are talking about something that goes off the scales under the Official Secrets Act, to which I'm a signatory. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So I work with nuclear weapons, the WE-177s, and I know the effects of a, a nuclear weapon catastrophe. And if one was set off in Eastern Europe, you can imagine the consequences, or from an underground car park in the city of London, what would be the consequences? So, as I said, I want to find out the truth, why Peter Hain refused to answer me uh, as a serviceman, as a veteran, um, with conditions where it is definitely in the public interest that this information, if uh, verified, there's a lot of people who need to go to jail under the uh, Nuclear Explosions Act as well. So Peter Hain was is a member of the Labour Party, yeah. and what's the Labour's um, opinions on, on nuclear deterrence? Well, I did dangle the information in front of Derby North MP Chris Williamson and Margaret Beckett, and they ran a mile. So, because I also passed the information to Jeremy Corbyn. Now, if you really? give... Yeah, really. So if you give information of that calibre to be examined for authenticity, you would expect a politician uh, with this information, if it's verified, there's a lot of people who need to go to jail, including politicians. Mr. Hain, Peter, Peter Hain. Right, okay. So, so this lady. Yes. Could we talk about this lady? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, quite knowledgeable about Miss Tara Andrea Davison, a.k.a. Tamara Rothschild, a.k.a. Anna Catalona, a.k.a. Did you say Rothschild? Oh, yes, I did. That's one of the aliases that she used in the formation of companies. Uh, when she was raided by the Derby police, they found out she had six mobile phones and each one had a name taped on it. And when it rang, she answered to the name that was taped on it. And uh, Anna Catalona was one and uh, Miss Tamara Rothschild was another. Is so, she actually related to the Rothschilds? No. She is a low-end money launderer, document forger and money launderer for the Labour Party. Wow. Where do, whereabouts and, is she and, now? Well, in the 7th of the 5th, 2012, she was due to appear in the Mole Crown Court uh, in a criminal trial to which she was accused of 27 charges of fraud, theft, money laundering and other nefarious activities. But she'd done a runner on the 4th. To? South America. It's which particular set. country? Well, people said uh, uh, Argentina. She's not in Brazil at the moment, is she? Because there's big elections going on oh, there. Oh, big festival as well. Yeah. <laughs> She's probably there. I don't know. Um, I would say that looking at some of the information that I recovered, that she is um, not in Argentina, she is somewhere uh, south, sorry, uh, east of Argentina. Um, yeah, because when she was raided by the Derby police, 19 Derby police and a dog squad, 
on the first of the first uh, of the January two thousand and ten. They kicked her doors in six o'clock in the morning um, while well, she was still in her night attire. Um, and the information that they recovered from there and the equipment that they recovered from there. She claimed that uh, they seized information regarding uh, child abuse in North Wales and also uh, she claimed to be an ex, sorry, a off-duty intelligence officer and she claimed to have worked for the powers to be in the city of Westminster. Is this true? Well I can assure you that she had a close friend and that close friend was her old friend was Mr Kevin James Carhill because he should be brought in with Peter Ain because Mr Kevin James Carhill was the intelligence advisor for Lord Paddy Ashdown, you know about Paddy Ashdown, uh -huh. Paddy Pantstown Ashdown, I think Absolutely. they call it, and um, Gordon Brown. So what would a man of that political background be giving evidence as the sole defendant's witness for the involvement of Andrea Davison within the intelligence community? So, as I said, Mr Peter Hain, I asked him, you know, why don't you ask the Foreign Office to issue a request from South America, wherever country she vanished to, without a passport, without a legal passport, um, to get her back to answer the questions to which part and parcel I've asked you there, you know, uh, provided you there in that document which I took to um, San Dudno. Has she been sentenced in her absence? Yes. How long did uh, she um, get? She got, uh, depending on the case, I think it's in this, is she was sentenced to some charges 30 months, others 12 months, but they were to run concurrent. So she was sentenced to 30 months. However, there was an order of the court that she returned, I, I, I think it's two, three million pounds from three accounts in Limassol, Cyprus which were the proceeds of crime to which she controlled. She didn't do that, so they sentenced her to another two years. So, in her absence. And my point is, when I provided the information to Derby North, Chris Williamson, and Margaret Beckett, sorry, Dame Margaret Beckett, Dame Margaret Beckett, they refused to assist in giving oh. myself and my lovely lady an interview with Boris Johnson at the Foreign Office because I wrote to the Foreign Office via Chris Williamson and Chris Williamson refused to gain us a meeting with the Foreign Office to expose all this including the involvement of Peter Hain. So really I mean a lot of these are serving MPs I mean, Oh Boris yes. Johnson's still yep. current yep. and so this is just yet another example of government's cover-ups corruption yeah at the highest level and that's where when it came to following Andrea Davison's nefarious activities in Bangor um, I also duplicated it with information that I had from South Africa is that a company uh, where Andrea Davison was making f uh, false and fake share certificates for various companies interlocked to an address in uh, Bangor called uh, Club Odessa, also known as Club Russia, and that was at 14 Menai View Terrace. And from there, uh, it was a Russian singles dating site uh, with Thai individuals. And this brings in this Lester gentleman just killed in a helicopter crash. Oh, really? Yeah, he was Thai. Yes. Um, and Andrea Davison's uh, cohorts, one was a guy called Robin Helmut Marie Jacobs and he was married previously to one of the Carry On Girls and is uh, quite a prolific uh, promoter of charities. Anyway, Robin Helmut Marie Jacobs, Andrea Davison used his passport 
to set up fake companies out of Bangor. I then picked this up and I included that in these court documents, one yeah. of six, six different filings, um, to show Andrea Davison was not just a common criminal, she had high connections to the corridors of power and should have been brought back and interrogated as to the higher involvement of politicians in money laundering to Limassol, Cyprus and Panama, to which I given full disclosure. So there's, there's a political agenda here and it's a can of worms that needs to be open in the general public interest. This is not something uh, that I'm going to let go away and neither will the other directors of Pandora's Box Investigation. Once you can see uh, political corruption on this level, you have a duty of care. And that's my duty of care as an ex-serviceman and a veteran, is to understand that when you take a politician uh, who will send you to war in the event of confrontation, these people should act with trust, honour, accountability and integrity. And from what I found, and is in there clearly, it's explained clearly. It's is a struggle that, to find a politician that, that you can trust, isn't it? And has well, dignity and... Well, you would, you would think that the average person, if you looked outside on the street, you would say that these people who struggled to make month-end living costs uh, would want the truth to come out about filth in politics. We need to clean and change the direction of politics, especially as a veteran, yeah. where I struggle quite, I struggle quite badly with my lovely lady, to be able to just live either eating or heating, and that's yeah, it drives me. It drives me that these people who have a jaunt around at one hundred and twenty thousand pound a year with expenses have the audacity to lie and be found to be corrupt. And that's why I will continue exposing these people. And we've got, um, in, just to finish off then, so for the Panama Papers, just yeah. remind me, there were politicians in there and businessmen. Yeah, uh, look, the, the people who would have no idea how to follow the money in a paper trail, what they'd have to look at is the average media attention was placed on an office in Panama called Mosec Fonseca. However, nobody looked at where Mosec Fonseca actually originated out of, and that was Hitching House, sorry, uh, in Hitching, it was uh, Envision House in Hitching. So nowhere near Panama? No. Funny, huh? Nobody mentioned that <laughs> in the papers, on TV. It doesn't have the same ring, does it? Hitching no. papers. In vision, in, you might have a vision, but in, in, in vision, is the same address as RM nominees and RM group is actually Raymond Morris and that's where they're in the same office side by side drinking from the same water cooler and this is where people need to understand follow the money right thank you so much it's a pleasure um, I'm sure this story will run and run. It's got many legs, as they say. And I've only got two. And thanks to everybody at home for listening. I hope so. Goodbye. Enjoy. Yeah. Bye. Bye.